for more on the budget battles these states are fighting, we want to bring in Moody's chief economist, Mark Zandi. Mark, good to have you on the show. Um, are these fights about politics or are they truly about economics? Well, I think uh, both. Uh, these states and local governments do have very severe fiscal problems. Uh, they're not getting any more money from the federal government. Uh, tax revenues are well below expenditure, so uh, they do need to make budget cuts and some tax increases. So this is uh, economics. But uh, determining exactly who is going to shoulder the burden, that, of course, is politics. So it's both economics and politics. Well, you know, we led into this uh, citing that $125 billion uh, in deficits in the next fiscal year faced by states. So uh, the reason, arguably, that teachers' pension plans in Ohio and Indiana matter to everyone in the country is that you are forecasting jobs are going to be cut. I mean, how many jobs do you think will be lost? Yeah, so the uh, cutbacks at state and local governments and the tax increases that they're imposing is a very significant headwind to the economic expansion. And you can see that best in uh, terms of jobs. So state and local governments have laid off approximately 400,000 people since they began reducing payrolls almost two years ago. And I think under the best of circumstances, we're going to see another couple hundred, 250,000 in job losses over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. So this is the most significant impediment to the job market and to the broader economy. So more than 600,000 jobs lost because of these arguments at the state level and, and the forced austerity. Is that going to slow down this recovery? Yes, it, it will be a, a significant uh, impediment to growth. Uh, it, I don't think it uh, is enough to stop the economic expansion. There are other sources of economic growth that are kicking in that will win the day. But, uh, you know, clearly the economy would be doing much better if we didn't have to go through this kind of budget cutting. But unfortunately, we do. And then the new worry is gas prices perhaps coming up to $4 a gallon. I mean, what's that number where you really think that gas and oil could become an impediment to the recovery or slow the rate of growth significantly? Right, right. Well, I, I think uh, at uh, $3.20 for a gallon of regular unleaded, I know you don't pay that in New York, but nationwide mm -hmm. that's the average. Uh, I think we can reasonably, uh, gracefully digest that. I don't think it'll do any significant damage. If we get uh, back closer to $4 a gallon, which was the peak back in the summer of 08, uh, that would be a significant problem, a headwind. I don't know if it actually pushes us into recession, but it would be very uncomfortable. And of course, you have to put it into context. If we're going to $4 for a gallon of regular unleaded, that means something probably is going really wrong uh, out there in the rest of the world. And so that could be undermining confidence, uh, affecting, like the, affecting the stock market, as we've seen in the last couple of days. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty ugly scenario. Nothing is more pernicious to our economy than higher oil prices. There's nothing that would do more damage. Give me your quick read on that existing home sales figure that we got, because that was, at first glance, a positive data point this morning. Is the volume telling us the real story here, or are you worried about the prices? Well, you know, I was uh, pleasantly surprised, too. Uh, I think we, we, we are seeing and we will continue to see more price declines, largely because we still have a lot of foreclosed property that will hit the market over the next six to nine months. But I am encouraged that it looks like investors are coming in. People see value in these, these home prices. And so the price declines that we're going to suffer, I think, will be modest. So this is a piece of good news. What's your take on the argument that stagflation, Mohammed al Aryan's argument, stagflation is going to happen as a result of this unrest in the Middle East? You buy it? Well, yeah, I mean, if oil prices rise significantly, that is the prescription for stagflation. I mean, the higher oil prices cream the economy, and of course it creams the economy because we're paying higher prices, higher inflation. That's stagflation. Uh, so if, uh, if we do see those higher oil prices, uh, yes, stagflation will occur. I'm still hopeful, uh, although uh, less certain, that uh, you know, prices will settle down and we won't experience uh, those kinds of uh, stagflation scenarios. All right. Mark Sandy, thank you very much for joining us thank you. in business today. It was great to talk to you.